One of the most useful things I learned in my education was how to think like a scientist. Despite this, however, how to think like a scientist was never explicitly taught to me. Instead, I acquired this skill by doing lab work and by reading books on the history and sociology of science. While this way of thinking is sometimes hard to explain, I'm going to do my best to articulate it in this video. Before I do so, however, I want to clarify what I'm not trying to do. While this video is about how to think like a scientist, it would not give you a method that you can apply to every single circumstance. That's because scientists themselves lack such a method. There is simply no one-size-fits-all scientific method for solving every type of problem across the sciences. This video is also not a toolkit of scientific concepts. If you want a video like that, then I highly recommend watching my other video on Carl Sagan's Bologna Detection Kit. That video explains things such as Occam's Razor. Instead of explaining a method or a toolbox of concepts, this video will explain something that I consider even more essential. That is, the virtues that scientists themselves cultivate through their studies and practices. While it is rare for a scientist themselves to articulate these virtues, they are one of the most unique and important things about all the sciences. Before we get into some of these virtues, however, we must explain what exactly a virtue is. Generally defined, a virtue is a characteristic one has that promotes their own moral excellence. These are valued because they increase the odds of one living a good life, and they make society a better place to live. Some examples of moral virtues are kindness and courage. Virtues themselves are gained and increased through daily practice. If one wanted to become a kinder person, for example, then they would have to make a daily effort to be kinder to the people around them. If one does this enough, then kindness becomes second nature to them, and one feels odd when they are not kind to other people. Just as in the case of kindness, there are also scientific virtues. These are the characteristics that scientists, at least at their very best, strive to have. Just as in the case of ethical virtues such as kindness or honesty, these scientific virtues are the underlying feature of the scientific mind that directs scientists on how to act and how to proceed. Given this, at least in my opinion, they're one of the most important things about the sciences. One of the most important scientific virtues is curiosity. To find new truths out about the world and to work out the kinks in pre-existing theories, scientists have to allow themselves to ask questions and to be perplexed. They have to say, huh, I wonder why this works this way. Or, I wonder what a good solution is to this existing problem in the sciences. Scientists being perplexed and sincerely asking questions is one of the reasons that science has made such progress in such a quick time. Another scientific virtue that is very important is open-mindedness. For science to advance, and for scientists themselves to do good work, they have to be willing to fairly consider alternatives across the board given the evidence that supports them. Notice the key word here being evidence. It is not open-minded to accept something if there is no supporting evidence. This is simply being gullible. As it has been pointed out over and over again, one wants to definitely keep an open mind. However, you don't want a mind so open that your brain falls out of your head. One of the most underrated and least discussed scientific virtues is clarity. Regardless of what one's science degree is in, there is a requirement to be clear when one writes lab reports. One has to explicitly state their methodology, the aims of their experiments, and how it went, with all their data, and then a conclusion. Clarity is even more important for the same reasons when writing peer-reviewed scientific papers. If you are not clear, then others cannot judge your work and if it is valid or not. This makes clarity an essential part of the sciences. Without it, Things like testing and reproducibility would be much harder to do. A virtue which is highly related to clarity is honesty. Scientists are expected to truthfully present their results, even if they do not come to strong conclusions that they desired. Given how important this is for the advancement of science, science itself has built-in mechanisms for filtering out dishonesty. It is certainly okay to make mistakes in the sciences. After all, scientists themselves are just people. If, however, it becomes apparent that a scientist fudged the data, 
or use purposely dishonest methodologies. This could lead to loss of grant money, in certain circumstances firing, or the loss of their ability to practice medicine if they're a medical doctor. In other words, honesty is a big deal. Just as big as a deal is the virtue of humility. While there is this idea in the popular imagination of the arrogant scientist cutting against the grain and thinking that they have these dramatic conclusions, in fact, most scientific papers are nothing like this. If you read one, there's usually something like a very mild result or very small correlation, which is interesting. This is because scientific revolutions happen very rarely. It is seldom that there is dramatic research done where you get something like an Einstein or Darwin overthrowing and dramatically changing how we view the world. Instead of being dramatic overthrows, most science is simply normal science. By this I mean that scientists go to their lab or their computers and simply try to iron out the kinks in pre-existing theories and make small contributions. While this may not be that exciting sounding, this in fact is how most scientific progress is made. Given that these changes tend to be small, scientist results usually are worded where they are very humble. For example, they'll state that there tends to be a mild correlation between A and B. Or that when they do X, interesting fact Y happens and it needs further investigation. Despite scientists themselves valuing humility very greatly, you would never know it from reading many popular science blogs. This is because they'll misinterpret a scientific paper and think that there is some dramatic result that is actually not in the paper itself. They'll say something like, scientists suggest this food cures cancer. When in reality, scientists noted that there was a very small correlation between two factors in the study and that it needs more research. At this point you may be thinking, well those values are good and all, but why are they so important to science? After all, can't one just use the tools of science to do research without worrying about these types of things? One of the reasons why that they are so important is because, without virtues like this to direct science, the toolkit of science is simply useless. If one is not open-minded, clear, honest, humble, and curious, then simply knowing statistics will not get you anywhere. To make progress or iron out the kinks in science, one has to be curious about what can happen, open-minded about the results, clear when expressing what the results are, honest about their methodologies, and humble with their results. If this is done over time by enough people, then science inevitably lurches forward and makes progress. While there are more virtues than we listed here, and there is much more to science than simply virtue, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please like and subscribe below. And until next time, stay skeptical.